Hello, and today we're going to be reviewing the Black & Decker LCS 1020 20-volt 10 20-inch chainsaw. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and start off talking about the overall ergonomics and the grips on this particular chainsaw. Start off with the forward grip. It's going to be another nice wraparound handle, very similar to what you'll find on the Ryobi 10-inch chainsaw. It's made of a hard black plastic, and it's pretty easy to grip along its entire length. I really do like these wraparound handles because it makes operating the chainsaw in a horizontal position much easier, and this is very helpful when you are working very close to the ground. So this is definitely something I like seeing in a chainsaw. Now, when it comes to the rear grip it's a pretty much um, standard design it's about the right size that will fit just about everybody's hands and it's large enough or the uh, space in between the bottom and top is large enough where you can easily wear gloves without having to worry about your hands being in a cramped position so overall really no complaints here and everything here gets a pass Okay, next up we have the trigger system. Now the trigger and safety on this particular chainsaw are pretty much integrated. It's an always on safety style, which is pretty much the, uh, what you'll find on all electric chainsaws. In order to pull the trigger, you'll have to pull the safety back and then you'll be able to pull the trigger. The trigger and safety are both made of a hard black plastic, but are large enough where you can easily access them even when you are wearing gloves. The motor in this particular chainsaw is fairly responsive, but is only a single speed, which means that if you need something with a variable speed output, and you're well, you're out of luck with this particular chainsaw but as long as you're happy with the single speed option when it comes to the motor this isn't a half bad little chainsaw to take a look at so at the end of the day when it comes to the trigger and safety on this particular tool they're pretty average but they get a pass okay next we have the oiling system now the oiling system on this particular chainsaw is it's better than what was on the Ryobi 10 inch chainsaw, but still I have my complaints. The tank on this particular chainsaw is a little bit on the small side, so if you have a larger size job, you're definitely going to have to pack that oil can with you. And when it comes to the overall design here, it's as basic as they always come. I really wish that they would include a ball valve in between where the oiling point on the blade is and the tank itself, simply because I hate having to drain the tank after every single use. And if you don't drain the tank after every single use, you're going to have an oil puddle. And if you're transporting this particular tool, always have it on top of cardboard on the floor of your vehicle and not on top of any sort of upholstery that could be damaged by the oil that is leaking out of the chainsaw. So with that being said, the oil system on this particular chainsaw, while it is adequate, could use some improvements. But it's no worse than any other chainsaw in this price category on the market, so it gets a pass. Okay, next up we have the Ford Guard. Now the Ford Guard in this particular chainsaw is average. It's made of a black plastic that is fairly flexible and will protect your hand against smaller objects that might come snapping back at you if you're working in a particularly dense area with lots of small shrubs or branches. It's a decent design and will, will definitely help keep you in full control of this particular chainsaw, so it gets a pass from me. Moving on. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the chain tensioning system and the clutch cover. But first of all, an important safety tip. Make sure you always disconnect the battery from the chainsaw before working on the chain or on the clutch cover or any other part of the tool that is sharp and could, well, cut you. But with that being said, let's talk about how the chain tensioning system works on this particular chainsaw. In order to loosen the chain or tighten the chain, you will simply turn the black knob to the left a couple of turns and then you will be able to adjust it with the orange dial. In order to tighten it, you will rotate the orange knob to the uh, right and in order to loosen it you will rotate it to the left once you have it set to the proper tension that you want you will tighten the black knob again and then you'll be all set to go overall it's a fairly basic system and it gets the job done and I haven't noticed any major issues with it overall I really do like the chain tensioning system on this particular chainsaw and I haven't had any issues with it well adjusting itself in use so as far as I'm concerned everything here gets a pass just remember that you need to have that black knob tight once you are, well, done adjusting the tension of the chain. So yeah, that's about the sum of it. No major complaints, and it gets a pass from me, and I definitely like working with this particular chainsaw's toolless system, unlike Ryobi's toolless systems. Those ones suck. So, with that being said, let's talk about the clutch cover. Overall, the clutch cover is a fairly basic design here. It is mostly made out of plastic, with the exception of a few metal parts for the chain tightening system. And, well, everything here works as intended. It's easy to clean, everything has been working as intended, and all the important parts on the chainsaw itself are also made out of metal, such as the sprocket, as well as the bolt for holding well the cover on, into place. So, I don't really have any major complaints here. Now, when you go to reattach the clutch cover to the chainsaw, make sure that you have the chain tightening system, or the uh, parts on the bar of the 
blade properly inserted into the tightening system on the cover and then once you have that all properly aligned then you can well start tightening up the uh, black knob and then you will be able to adjust the tension of the chain and once all that has been completed well then you're set to go overall i really do like this particular system and i really wish that ryobi's uh toolless system had worked out but it, it appears because of their recent re, uh, new tool announcements that they're giving up on their toolless design. And well, after using their toolless design, I can understand why. But when it comes to Black & Decker, I think their toolless design actually works as intended and I have zero complaints and this is definitely my personal preference when it comes to, well, adjusting the chain on a chainsaw. So yeah, moving on. Okay, next up we have the bar, the chain, and the sheath. Now, the bar on this particular chainsaw is made out of metal, and it's been, well, perfectly adequate. It's nice and strong, and I haven't had any issues with it becoming bent or misaligned, and it seems to work as intended. And it is a proper 10 inches in length, unlike the Ryobi chainsaw. And when it comes to the chain, well, no complaints there. It seems to work just fine, and it's been cutting through anything that I put in front of it. And the sheath on this particular chainsaw is better than the sheath on the Ryobi Ryobi 10 inch chainsaw, but unfortunately I still don't trust it 100%. So at the end of the day, everything here pretty much gets a pass or is better than the Ryobi 10 inch chainsaw, so I'm fairly happy with the performance. Moving on. And last but not least, we have the battery slot. Now, the battery slot is located in the exact same spot as on the Ryobi 10 inch chainsaw, but obviously is a completely different kind of battery. Overall, this particular tool's battery slot is adequate. I don't really have any major complaints. The battery's locked in nice and securely and well everything is perfectly adequate. I will say that the runtime on this particular chainsaw is fairly good considering that I was using it with a 2 amp hour battery and was able to complete multiple small jobs with a single charge. So yeah, if you have an exceptionally large job I would highly recommend using a 4 amp hour battery but even with the include 2 amp hour battery I found it more than sufficient for completing well just some average pruning around the yard. So yeah, no complaints plates here and it gets a pass. Okay, without a battery, the tool weighs 2,745 grams, which is a little over six pounds. And with a two amp hour battery, it weighs 3,124 grams, which is a little under seven pounds. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this tool in use. I have to say I'm pretty happy with this particular chainsaw in use, especially when you compare it against the Ryobi 10 inch chainsaw. It's pretty much almost identical to the Ryobi 10 inch chainsaw, except it uses Black & Decker batteries instead, but they, well, pretty much fixed everything that was wrong with the Ryobi 10 inch chainsaw. It actually has 10 inches of usable space on the bar. Its oiling system works as intended and doesn't leak constantly or make you run out of oil too quickly, although the tank is a little bit on the small side. And well, the toolless system in the field is so much better than Ryobi. Ryobi did try to implement a toolless system on a uh, 18 volt chainsaw, as well as their pruning 18 volt HP uh, chainsaw, but it didn't work out and I did try out, well I actually do own the 8 inch Ryobi HP pruning chainsaw and it's toolless system is a disaster. But this particular chainsaw toolless system is great. I haven't had any issues with it uh, adjusting itself in use and as long as you get that black handle tightened down properly, it stays right where you put it. So quite frankly, I'm very happy with its overall performance, especially when it comes to the toolless system. It is so nice not having to mess around with wrenches or flatheads out in the field. And when it comes to the amount of power of this particular chainsaw, while it isn't brushless, which is a disappointment, I would have liked to have seen it be brushless, it still has more power than the 18 volt chainsaw from Ryobi. So there's another bit added benefit. I think the only thing that the Ryobi actually beats this particular chainsaw on is its wraparound handle, but there's not a big enough difference for me to actually really care all that much about it. So in use, I have to say I'm very happy with this particular chainsaw and overall, I don't really have any major complaints. So yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the pros and cons. 20 volt. 20 volt means that it will work with your Black & Decker lithium 20 volt batteries and you can adapt batteries over from other brands via third party adapters. Just remember you do that at your own risk. Toolless. The toolless chain tightening system on this particular chainsaw is very effective and works as intended without any shortcomings that I have noticed. So this is definitely a pro. True 10 inch bar. The bar on this particular chainsaw actually has 10 inches of usable space and as far as I'm concerned that's a pro. 
battery life. Overall, the battery life is fairly good with this particular chainsaw, especially considering that it's using a brushed motor. Wait, overall the weight on this particular chainsaw is fairly reasonable, and so if you are looking to work on top of the ladder or don't have much upper body strength, this isn't a half bad chainsaw to take a look at. And the first con would be brushed. It's using a brush motor, and unfortunately, that is definitely a little bit of a con. It's not a huge one, but I definitely would have preferred seeing a brushless motor. And the last con would be small oil tank. The oil tank on this particular tool is on the small side, and while that will be great for getting you through quick and easy jobs, if you have a larger day planned, you're going to want to pack extra oil. And that is it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this little saw. I really do like this little saw. It pretty much fixes all the things I found wrong with Ryobi's 18 volt 10 inch chainsaw and well quite frankly this has been a pleasure to use. Really the only major super downside I can think of would be the fact that replacement of batteries or extra batteries from Black & Decker are very expensive considering that this is a budget tool. A replacement battery is going to cost you about $80 for a 4 amp hour battery and that's definitely on the high side. So as long as you know what you're getting into, don't care about the price or are adapting batteries over from other brands, this little saw comes recommended. And that is it for this particular video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. God bless.